Hey, it's Greg from Cutting Edge Stencils, and we are live from the Cutting Edge Studios in Ramsey, New Jersey. This is part of a series, this is the second in a part of a series of how to paint and stencil with me, Greg Swisher. I'm gonna take my 30 years experience, I'm gonna to try to answer your questions and walk you through your projects and give you the confidence that you need to be able to get creative in your own house uh, in, with painting and stenciling. So we talked a little bit last week about how we would break the job down or your project down so you could easily think about it and move forward. The first thing I would think about is your design intention. Uh, what is the, the uh, intention of the project? What is this space, how is the space going to be used? Um, what's the function? You know, Frank Lloyd Wright said, form follows function, and he was right. Uh, I always think about how the room is gonna be used first. Is it a mud room that needs uh, durability uh, and it needs to be able to be clean? Uh, then you might wanna use a higher sheen paint and you might uh, wanna be able to clean that. Is it a space that you're relaxing and watching television in? Well, then you probably want a softer finish on the walls, not very busy walls. Is it a, a formal space like a powder room that you're spending a very limited amount of time in so you can afford to have more dramatic color, more dramatic pattern? It's a place to have some fun. So you wanna think about these things and you also wanna consider things like the lighting in a space. Uh, do you have incandescent lights that throw a pink cast? Uh, you want to know this as you're, as you're about to start your project. You might pick uh, an off-white color and then turn the lights on and it turns pink. Uh, you don't want that surprise. You want to know about this going into the project. So think about that. Also, uh, let's say your room size and shape. Let's take that into consideration. Let's say you have low ceilings. You might want to do a, say, a vertical pattern like one of our stencils behind us, uh, beads, that gives a vertical lift and it's going to fool the eye into thinking that the ceiling is higher. So we want to think about the project a little bit. Uh, is, the, is the room all cut up with windows and doors? If it is, you probably don't want a real busy pattern on the walls. You've got too much going on. It's just difficult to take in as a, an observer. So these are just things I want you to think about. I want you to think about color clashes, pattern clashes, how the room is going to be used, lighting in the space, and this will help you to pick your stencil or your paint colors and to be able to move forward the project and actually get what you're looking for out of the project. All right, um, we'll get more into this as we start a real project in the next week or two, but I'm going to talk to you about tools a little bit now. I'm going to move it over. And so I've got a bunch of tools here and we'll just quickly talk about them. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on them. We'll get more in depth about each tool as we start to use them on projects. But just some basic tools you want to have around. You know, in the culinary world, we call it mise en place. That means everything in its place. So when you're doing your project, you just reach for it and it's there. You're not running down to Home Depot trying to find, uh, you know, the right grit sandpaper. Uh, and speaking of sandpaper, have some sandpaper around. You're going to have to do some prep on your space, most likely. Uh, 120 is a good sandpaper grit for just working the walls. Uh, fine sanding, move to 220. That'll be for trim, things like that. You can use sanding blocks. There's all types of sanding blocks here. I find them very helpful. Uh, you will cut, your, cut or rip your sandpaper into strips of four for a block like this. Let me just show you how we load that up. So, what you do is you bend this back. It's got these little pins here. You put the paper in, push it down, pull it tight around, make sure it's tight, lift it up, push it in, down. There's your sanding block. It's gonna give you a nice level sanding when you're repairing the walls. Okay, so here's also some different uh, patch fillers that you can use for nail pops and things like that. I am going to get into detail about how to fix a nail pop and to fix things like this before you do your stenciling project. Um, I would have some caulk around. I'll show you how to properly caulk. Have a screw gun. Um, this is uh, just some spray adhesive if you're doing some um, stenciling. Things like <clears throat> TSP, trisodium phosphate, is a great cleaner if you're doing a tile floor project, if you're stenciling your floors. You don't want to get into a big rip out. You might want to consider one of our beautiful tile stencils. Save yourself all that demo, all that mess, and be able to paint your floor and get this great look. Uh, you should have paint can opener 
or a five tool. Five tool, we went over this a little bit last week, curved areas for cleaning rollers, scrapers, uh, to pull nails. There's lots of, uh, these are just great to have uh, in your toolbox. Uh, have the proper size screwdrivers. It's really uh, just common sense to use a small screwdriver on a small screw head. This is great for taking your switch plates off and uh, projects like that. Uh, you got to have a hammer around this way you can knock your lids back on and take care of your nail pops. It's great to have a putty knife. It's great to have a razor blade, something sharp. Also, we have our brushes here. Now, regular painting, nice nylon bristle brush. They work great. Specialty brushes for stenciling. We have our beautiful cutting edge uh, professional stencil brushes here. These work wonderful for your stencil project. I like to have some Fitch brushes and touch-up brushes here so I can connect the bridges on my stencil projects or touch up around a baseboard or around a window molding. We also have, you know, I like to have a dust brush so when you're done with your sanding, you come in, you can dust things off. I had an interesting oh. question here. Yeah, uh, what's up? Someone said, any recommendations for textured walls? Would you use a roller or would you recommend a brush? To paint, to paint the textured walls. Uh, I would use a roller. Uh, when you get into texture, what happens is you want to have a, a thicker nap roller. Rollers come in nap, which is the thickness of the, of the uh, covering on it. The thicker they are, the better they are for getting into the grooves of your textured walls. If you had a very tight nap roller or a brush and you're trying to paint the texture, it's going to hit the surface. You're going to be there all day. So I would go with about a half an inch nap roller. That would be the best way to base coat or prime your textured walls. Also, depending on the texture, I may knock it down. If it's a real dramatic texture, I may take something like um, a sanding block and just knock the real high ridges off. You can also, if it's a large project, use a sanding pole. Oops, a sanding pole that has a sanding block on the end and you just use that on the wall. It makes very quick work of the high areas of that texture. I find them, a, a, they can be a little too aggressive. It's not really comfortable to be around, in my opinion. So knock them down a little bit and give them your priming with a, 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 a medium nap roller. Would you use the same to, to uh, paint the actual stencil design? No, I would go to a tighter nap. I would actually go right to a dense foam roller uh, and yes, you may have trouble getting into those areas, but now you're walking this fine line between bleed of the stencil and the, the way the game goes is the thicker the nap, like so, the more fluffy it is, the more bleed you will get, the more paint seepage you're going to get underneath the edge of the stencil. So I would use a tight nap roller, even on a texture, come in, get 90% of it, then take my stencil brush and use a pouncing technique straight up and down to get into those areas that this didn't, uh, that, the, uh, that the dense foam roller did not get into. If you did it with a, a, a big nap roller, you're going to get a messy edge, a messy bleed. So, so another specialty brush, this is just for faux finishes and such. This is a badger brush, but uh, it's nice to have a selection. It depends on the project, of course. Uh, stir your paint, very simple thing that a lot of people forget. If you buy your paint brand new and you're getting it from Home Depot, they're going to put it on a shaker. But uh, if it's been sitting on your shelf for a little bit, stir it from the bottom. Otherwise, you're not going to get good coverage. Um, here's a great tool for cleaning up your brushes. This is a brush comb and when you're full of paint here you just put the brush comb in and you comb it under the water like that and that's going to clean your brush so fast. This is a great tool. Also another way for cleaning your brushes, this is for cleaning stencil brushes, is you'll come in and you'll just work the stencil brush on this uh, textured surface and it'll remove the paint very quickly. This is all available at CuttingEdgeStencils.com and by the way, we are having a sale, Cozy 20, this weekend. Cozy 20, save 20% on all your stencil needs, Cutting Edge Stencils. So good to have tape measure, good to have a pair of scissors, good to have a uh, pencil, basic tools, roll of um, Paper towels, always a good idea, especially when stenciling, because you're going to need to offload your roller onto some paper towels. 
you know, tapes, very interesting. Blue tape, definitely the way to go. Low-tack painter's tape. Uh, we'll get more into masking um, when, uh, when we start a project, but five tools work great with your masking. Gives you a nice clean cut when you, when you uh, mask your baseboards or you do corners. Uh, I find it a great tool for that. There's also specialty tapes that uh, have a wrinkled edge. And what these allow you to do is to do curved applications. So you may want to do a project where you're doing some mountains and then you're going to stencil some pine trees in front of it. This is a great tape to be able to get those shapes, horizon lines, and things like that. So this is another specialty tape that you might want to consider for your project. So those are the basic tools. Uh, also, um, nice to have a pair of uh, latex or um, rubber gloves. They just keep your hands clean. They're really great disposable gloves. Of course, you're going to need a tarp or an old uh, sheet or something. I like old sheets. They work great. Nice to have a, a rag around for caulking. Um, there you go. I'm going to, you know, just for fun, I'm going to load this roller here, dense foam roller, offload it onto some paper towels, and I'm just going to roll our beads behind us. Imagine we had a room with seven foot ceilings. Maybe it's a basement area that doesn't have the full eight foot ceilings, and it's feeling like it's coming down on us. We're a little claustrophobic. We're going to add this vertical finish to the wall, and it's going to just give us this lift and uh, make the room feel like it has a higher ceiling. So look, I'm loading my roller deliberately, evenly, so it's not, so it doesn't have all the paint on one side of it. I get a nice even load on the roller, then I go to the paper towels, and I do a few passes on it, and I have this beautifully loaded, very lightly loaded roller. That's how you want to stencil. And now I'm going to come up here to our beads. I'm going to step this side here. And, oh, there's a very important tool I didn't talk about. It's the cutting edge stencils stencil level. This is amazing. I would not do a wall finish uh, stencil project without this. This clips to the bottom of your stencil or the top of your stencil. And instead of sitting there with uh, large levels and pencils and marking up your walls, you know your stencil is level and then you can move it and align it and you're not uh, wrestling with figuring out is this going to be a vertical, is this going to stay straight, is this going to line up. This is a great tool. You really want this in your toolbox. So here I go. I've got my lightly roll, uh, loaded dense foam roller. Just give me a little demo on how that works. So if these were textured walls, like that question we had, I would do this, and any areas that didn't get the paint, I would just take my professional cutting edge stencil brush, and I would just do a vertical pouncing right into that, and it would finish that area off. So there we go. This stenciling is, is such a satisfying way to decorate and to paint. I'm going to come back here and load a little bit more because it makes everyone an artist. Anyone can do this. Select the pattern that you want, then we'll help you and guide you in uh, being able to pick the proper colors, the proper uh, patterns um, with what I'm going to teach you. So this way, you're going to get a fantastic result with your project. You're going to feel empowered you're going to have a beautiful room to show off to your friends. And you know what? Don't worry about mistakes. The thing is, is the way that we learn is by our mistakes. A professional is, in my opinion, considered uh, how good they can cover their tracks or their mistakes. A professional has made more mistakes than any amateur. So don't be afraid of mistakes. This is paint. Let's just say I make a mistake. I take the base coat color, which I happen to know is Navajo white, I paint it over, and I start over. And I learned, and I'm never going to forget. So, and you know, here's another thing. You see how the stencil kind of comes off the wall a little bit. You see that? The pressure of the roller is actually pushing it flat against the wall. So you don't necessarily need spray adhesive 
for every project. For stencils like this, I rarely, rarely use it. So I'm just going to finish this, this up here and then pull this so you can see what this looks like. And then we can start thinking about next week. And, you know, we're going to get into the projects and I'm going to really get into some preparation on your walls because I think people would like to know how to do repairs properly, how to caulk. Uh, we had some people working for us back in the day, and uh, let me tell you, they did not know how to caulk. Uh, they were caulking with a paintbrush. You do not caulk with a paintbrush. I will show you the proper professional way to caulk um, and to repair nail pops and to sand the wall. And here we go. So we, just getting a quick finish on here with the beads. I'm not even going to go all the way here. I want you to see how great it starts to look. And we start to build this beautiful vertical finish. And then I would take this bubble level here that's clipped on our stencil level. I would check it when I line this up and I know I'm ready to go. So I'm gonna put this aside here. I wanna thank you all for tuning in today. This is gonna be a really fun series and I'm going to teach you everything I can uh, about doing your project you please ask your questions in the comment area. I'm going to do my best to get to all of them. And for all your stenciling needs, go to Cutting Edge Stencil. I would say this weekend, if you want to save 20%, Cozy 20. And I'll see you back here next Friday, 11 o'clock. Thanks. We'll see you then. Mm -hmm.